we have a curve shown by this line here, and then a tangent at a point P, which is given here. P is here, and then we're told that the tangent has gradient two, and we're asked to show that the x-coordinate of P satisfies this equation. So what we need to remember is that the gradient of the curve is equal to the gradient of the tangent at the point where they touch. We need to find the gradient function, dy by dx. This is going to involve the quotient rule because we have a fraction, u dash v minus u v dash over v squared. So this is my u, this is my v, u dash is going to be 2 and I differentiate the top, v dash is going to be 8x. So 2 times 4x squared plus 1 minus u, which is 2x minus 3, times v dash, which is 8x. Sorry, I'm struggling to fit that in. All over 4x squared plus 1. Let's just simplify that. So I'm going to get 8x squared plus 2 minus 16x squared, and it's a double negative minus times minus 3 times 8x is going to become plus 24x over 4x squared plus 1. I could simplify it a little bit more, but I'll just keep going. At p, right, it's going to be minus 8x squared plus 24x plus 2 is going to uh, all over 4x squared plus 1 squared is going to equal 2. I can multiply through. So I can just do this. Therefore, minus 8x squared plus 24x plus 2. Um, actually, what I'm going to do at this point is you could, mul you could multiply the bracket out and then times through by 2. But because 2 goes into everything on the left, I'm just going to divide through by 2. So minus 4x squared plus 12x plus 1. And then expand the double bracket. So 16x to the 4 plus 4x squared plus 4x squared. So 8x squared plus 1. The 1s cancel. I'm trying to get to this. So 16x to the 4 minus no, plus 12x squared minus 12x is going to equal 0. I can divide through by a constant, no, no worries. It's going to become 4x to the 4 plus 3x squared minus 3x equals 0. So there's just an extra factor of x now. Um, I'm just going to say divide by x, you have to be a bit more careful when you're dividing by functions of x because they, what if they equal 0? Divide by x since not equal to 0 at p, we can see that from the sketch. Therefore, finally, 4x to the 3 plus 3x minus 3 is equal to 0. I'll show by calculation the x coordinate of p, that's the x satisfying this equation, is between 0.5 and 1. So I'm going to let f of x function equal 4x cubed plus 3x minus 3. Let's find out f of 0.5 and f of 1. Actually, f of 1 is very quick to do. It's just going to be 4 times 1 cubed, which is 1, so 4 plus 3 minus 3, it's going to be 4, which is greater than 0. I'm, I'm seeking a sign change here. And then it's going to be 4 times 0.5 cubed plus 3 times 0.5 minus 3 for the other one, minus 1, which is less than 0. So we have a sign change and f of x is continuous over the interval of 
So P lies between 0.5 and 1. On to part C. So part C takes the equation we've just found, rearranges it, and turns it into a, an iteration formula, fixed point iteration. However, we're asked to show that this iteration cannot converge to the x coordinate of p, whatever starting value is used. Now, actually, I didn't do this correctly. I tried to draw um, a cobweb diagram to show why it doesn't converge, but that, that isn't sufficient. And I'll talk about that a little bit at the end. What you have to use, and do you know what? I have not mastered this myself yet, is this little thing on the specification. So it says, you must know that an iterative, form, iterative formula converges to a root at x equals a if the modulus of the derivative of the function on the right is less than 1, and if x1 is sufficiently close to a. So let's get our heads around this here. And you, yeah, you sort of, do you even sort of quote it? Here, g of x is going to be this 3 minus 4x cubed over 3, which means g dat, oh, I can simplify that to 1 minus 4 over 3x cubed. So g dash x is going to simply be minus 4x squared. Now, since the root lies between 0.5 and 1, then for us, g dash of a is in fact, or the modulus, is going to be greater than 1, because it's going to be like minus 4 times you know, 0 0.5 squared is as, is as small as it gets. And that even then it would be, that would be equal minus one. Um, but we, we know the root's not there. So it, yeah, the g dash of a is going to be greater than one. And well, it doesn't say it here in the specification, but basically if it, if it doesn't, um, sorry. So if uh, the iteration converges to a root, if this is true, if it's not true, then it won't converge to a root. I think that that's what we can take from this, even though it doesn't say that in the specification, that it, that is uh, something that I think is true. So so the iterative formula in this case cannot converge to the x-coordinates of p. I'm kind of taking this from the mark scheme because they wrote it a little bit better than how I did it. Let me talk a little bit more about this. So that, that is the answer. Just want to expand, talk about the, my method, which wasn't, uh, wasn't good enough, but it will also help link to the idea here. So let's say I want to plot one y equals 1 minus 4 over 3x cubed. Well, an x cubed graph minus x cubed graph, rather, looks like this. So if I, I stretch it slightly, it's still going to look similar. If I add 1, it's going to translate uh, by 1 in the positive y direction. So I can, I can draw it like this. And, and then what we are also doing is plotting y equals x. This is how fixed point iteration works. Okay, we've got x on the left hand side, so I try that again. Okay, and that is our point P now actually, that's what we've turned this problem into. It's very, quite interesting really how we've gone from here to like finding the root of a cubic to creating this fixed, attempting to create a fixed point iteration that gives this, but they're all, they all give the same value. Um, so let's say we start at this point here, then we're not that um, close to the root. What we would do now is we put in x and that becomes our value of y, which then becomes our new value of x, which means we go along here and then we go down to here. Okay, now actually it would converge in this case, 
So I've not I've drawn the gradient too small. This is kind of what we're getting at with the the gradient being less than one. Here I think I've made the gradient less than one, and so it's actually converged. So kind of forget that and let's draw it again for what is a bit more realistic. Right, so let's let me make it steeper. Something like that. Okay. This time if I start here, then it's gonna go along like this. Okay, and I might be exaggerating it slightly, but this is when it diverges. So it's just going to get further and further away now, like forever. Um, and that is what this is talking about, really. It's all about this subtle aspect of the cobweb diagram, the gradient at the, like, around, um, where, well, the gradient around the point of the root has to be less than one because then you'll then you'll hit it if it's steeper than one then it will end up spiraling out um i hope that makes a bit more sense it is i personally think it's a bit confusing but i've tried i've tried on the left although i didn't mean to i've kind of shown a case where the gradient's a little bit smaller and i probably probably should have made the gradient even steeper here like my diagram is not accurate if you were to plot it really accurately you'd see that around the point of the roots it never does actually equal one so it would never actually converge to it um and like i said i did try to explain it my by using a diagram but that is not that's not okay here because it all depends how you draw your curve uh, as i as i've just shown on the left if you draw it like this and it will converge so you cannot just say that is the reason why it doesn't converge you have to use this idea here One last bit of this question. It's been quite an epic one. So instead of using fixed point iteration, we're going to use the newton raphson method with initial value 0.5, because we know that's close to the root to determine the coordinates of p correct to five decimal places. Right. So this is given in the formula book. Xn plus 1 is Xn minus f of xn divided by f dash of xn. Newton Raphson. This uses a different approach to finding a root. Um, in fact, it uses tangents. I'm, I've, I explain it in another video, so I'm not going to talk about it here because of the length I've talked about other aspects. So remember, we've got, we're trying to find the roots. Although it relates to this curve, we're actually trying to find the root of this equation here. 4x cubed plus 3x minus 3. Which means for us, f dash x is going to be 12x squared plus 3. And therefore, in our case, the newton raphson formula just put your f of x in, but replace all your all your x's by xn's. And same with f dash x. Okay, and remember we were told to put right what we asked to do. We're actually finding the coordinates of p, so we're going to get the x value and then the y value, and the initial value is going to be 0.5. And it was five decimal places it wanted. So for this, we put 0 0.5 as our answer, and then it's going to be answer, that's our xn, minus, and then everywhere you see xn, just replace it by answer, just do it really carefully. Okay, we just keep pressing equals. 
I got nice two thirds the first time. Uh, I think I'll leave it exact. 29 over 45. All right. It doesn't actually say show each iteration. But I think I'm going to 0.643955. Actually, it converges very, very quickly. I think because the slope has a steep gradient, actually, so the tangent's going to hit the axis really quickly. The Newton Raphson fails at stationary points, or and it takes long time to converge when when the gradient is going to be um, is going to be like quite small, whereas the iteration, the fixed point iteration, works better then, as we saw. So zero point six four three nine five four. Okay, remember we wanted it to. All right, that's that's stayed stayed as it is. So x the five. Decimal place is going to be 0 0.64395. And then we need the y coordinate. Now, before I find the y coordinate, it's going to give you a little suggestion. Just to check that you've done it right, put it put this back in. In fact, I'm going to store it as an answer. So it's now this A. Put it back into the original equation that we're trying to solve. Because it is so easy to make a mistake. So if we get zero, then we can be pretty happy with that. And I'm using the exact value. Okay, so we can be pretty pretty happy with that. And now finally then, let's put it back into here we go, this function up here. Okay, we actually get minus exactly the same thing. So P has coordinates 0.64395 and minus 0.64395. Okay, thanks for sticking with me on this explanation. It's, uh, I always find these videos some of the toughest to make with the, the technical aspects, look how long this is. Well done.